Thank you guys for getting on tonight. It is the Team Fit and Fabulous call and it is Wednesday, June 10th. And today we are gonna talk about Instagram and Facebook. And I'm gonna give you guys my top tips um, on really how to learn how to market yourself and the do's and don'ts behind both. So that's my goal with this training tonight. First, I just wanna give out, give a huge shout out to Naima, Lindsay, and Chastity. Those three are rocking it. They got, you know, hit amazing successful points, which just means we're reaching and helping more people, and they are recruiting and just really bringing more people into this business. So that's amazing. Um, and I just wanted to shout them out real quick at the beginning of the call, but we'll dive right on in to um, the call here. So I'm just first gonna, we're gonna talk about like Instagram and Facebook and how they're different. And then just some top tips on um, the do's and don'ts kind of of both. So Instagram is totally different from Facebook and like how we should be posting and how to post. Instagram is, think of Instagram kind of like Pinterest or a magazine. So when you're going to go to the store and like get, you know, like self magazine or a fitness, you know, fitness magazine, you're opening it up and you know what to expect from that magazine. You're expecting fitness tips. You're expecting clean eating tips. You're um, expecting the latest new tennis shoe that's out on the market. And you're expecting to learn something from, from the magazine. And you know, before you even open it, what, what's going to be in the magazine. So you have to think of Instagram like that. And that's why consistency with Instagram is so important. There really should just be, you know, like three main topics on Instagram, two or three that is very consistent. So people, when they come to your Instagram, they know what to expect. Kind of like if you were buying a fitness magazine and so for example, to use not fitness as, cause all of us are going to be semi, you know, into fitness Our our stuff should be fitness on Instagram. Cause that's what we're trying to attract is more people that are into fitness or that are needing that type of inspiration. And so like for an example, if you are a salon owner and you were trying to attract people, um, to, you know, that specific salon, you're going to just consistently be attracting or be posting things on beauty, maybe makeup tips, hair tips, because that's what you offer. And so for us as fitness coaches, we're offering some sort of motivation, inspiration, fitness tips, clean eating tips, recipes, things like that. I mean, you can go outside the box a little bit, but consistently should be posting things in regards to that. Cause that's what we're wanting to attract is the person not maybe already, they don't have to be like a personal trainer or a fitness guru. They're looking for that kind of change. They are looking to be healthier. They're looking for that motivation or, you know, tips because when I'm opening up a fitness magazine, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Right. And so you have to really treat Instagram in that way. So, um, an example is like, you know, I'll see people and they're not in, you know, Beachbody. I'm not referring to any of you, but like, we can't be posting, you know, our workout. And then the next post can't be like, Oh, our kids first, you know, our kids birthday picture. And then the next picture is like, Oh, now I'm on vacation and I'm going to post a picture on vacation. And now I'm going to show you a pair of, you know, of my new, my new bed that I got or whatever. It just can't be that random because nobody's going to follow you for that because that's not interesting. And that's not a magazine. That's just your life. Right. And so Instagram has to be very um, defined. And you also want to make sure that your pictures are very clean and crisp. There's not a lot of clutter in the background. The picture itself has to be very pretty. And, and what, and I don't mean you, I mean, yeah, we all want to look our best, right? But I'm meaning the entire picture has to be pretty, meaning the background can't have like, if, if you're at home, you don't want to have like all this clutter in the background. You don't want your dirty laundry hanging out, like all this other stuff. You have to really put thought behind it because you, we're marketing, we're attracting people and people aren't going to follow you if it's just, if it's not eye catching. Cause we're, we take our phones. I do this. I take my phone and I'm scrolling through Instagram and then I find a picture. I'm like, Ooh, this is cool, right? And so you want your pictures in Instagram to be scroll stopping because we're all busy. We all have this, you know, life where we're on the go. So our pictures have to be clean and crisp. I recommend, you know, using, you know, the same types of fonts, the same types of colors, 
just keep it consistent and just so it's scroll stopping for people. Um, so really with Instagram, think of your Instagram account like a magazine and, and go from there. So um, let's see what else do I have on Instagram. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so what I was going to say too is like, when people are looking like, ooh, do I want to follow Kelsey Shackley? They, they, they see a picture, you know, that pops up into their feed and their feed at the very beginning, like posts or people that you may like or whatever. So they click Kelsey Shackley and now they're on your page and they're trying to decide, do I want to follow Kelsey Shackley or don't I, right? So they're just going to look at like the top nine to 10 pictures, maybe, you know, like in the first couple rows and and they're gonna decide, do I wanna follow her or do I don't? So if you're posting, like I said, your pit, your kids, your new car, your, you're all over the place with your posts, they're not gonna follow you. But if you're adding value and you're consistent and your pictures are good, and I don't mean you have to go out and get a photographer, um, a great person to look up is um, run for the health of it. Run for the health of it. Her kids actually take her pictures using her iPhone. And so, but they're clean, they're crisp, the background, you have to put some thought behind your pictures. And um, this could be a part-time job for your kids if you wanna, if they wanna make some money over the summer, like say, hey, let's spend a couple hours and go take some pictures and I'll give you 10 bucks or 20 bucks, or whatever you wanna do. But you really have to put some thought behind it. But definitely check out the Instagram account, run for the health of it. And that's, and she's a beach body coach, but she's, loves running and she's trying to attract more runners and so or people that you know are into running and so that's that's how she's doing it and so definitely check out her account um what else instagram oh if you don't have kids that can take pictures because we all know ruby can't do that for me so um <laughs> An app to check out is burst mode burst mode is a great one you can prop your phone up or some people have the uh cases on their phone that look that kind of open up like a wallet and you can prop your phone up that way and burst mode you it will go with a timer and it will just take a bunch of pictures so you can do it that way too and I knew that I know the new iPhones actually have the timer built into the camera so you could do that as well if you're taking pictures of food do not take a picture and post it of half-eaten food or food eating out of like you know, a to-go box or anything like that, invest a little bit of money and go and get like a $2 white plate from Walmart or Target and use that white clean plate just to make your pictures look pretty and just arrange it and set it and just, um, and do that. Make sure it's a good lighting from the natural light will do better on a food picture. Um, than it will from like, you know, a light from your house. So just try and get natural light, even if it's not a location necessarily that you're going to take your, that you're actually going to eat. So sometimes it means just like moving it and putting it somewhere just so it gets that good natural light for your picture. Um, so, okay. I'm going to kind of go into a lot of people are like, okay, so I'm going to build this awesome Instagram account and I'm going to attract people that are liking this. Now, how am I going to communicate with them? Because it's Instagram. We don't have private messaging like we do on Facebook. So think of Instagram like your meeting spot. So if I'm dating Naima, okay, I'm dating Naima <laughs> or Lindsay or whoever. I just see Naima right there. <laughs> um, so I'm dating her, right? <laughs> <laughs> or we're, we're not dating. We're just friends. But, um, so we met at a coffee shop. Let's say this. Okay. We met at a coffee shop. So think of Instagram, like the coffee shop, her and I start chatting in the coffee shop. And I'm like, I think she could be like a really good friend. Like she's awesome. Right. And so I'm like, well, maybe we should like hang out again. Like this is cool. Like we really got to know each other. So think of Instagram like that, just the meeting place you're attracting you're attracting people that are like you into your spot, into Instagram. So think of Instagram like Starbucks, okay? From there, once you start communicating, then you bring people to Facebook. Facebook is like the living room. Facebook is your living room where you really get that deep conversation going. You really start to understand people. That's where you really, you know, connect on a deeper level. You ask more questions about their family and their jobs and you really just try and get to know people. So Instagram is the connection where, you, where you're meeting them. You're attracting them. It's your Starbucks. And I really like Naima and I want to get to know her better. So I'm going to invite her into my living room where we're going to actually have more of a conversation. 
okay? So Facebook, living room, Instagram is like that meeting location, okay? So maybe that will help a little bit. Um, and then other people, some people will take, you know, you know, private messaging more into to email, and I think that's great. Um, sometimes I think it's more personal on Facebook, just because I can see their little picture and they can see me, and email doesn't have that. So I don't know. It's all, it's your personal preference there, but email would be like a living room too. So either place. Now with Facebook, Facebook, you have to think of it like your own reality TV show, right? So Facebook, I don't know. There's so many reality TV shows out going on right now. So just think of like what they do. They share their life on reality. You know, like where they go to dinner, where they shop, because because you're doing it, you're seeing it, right? So think of Facebook just like that. Facebook, you want to attract people to your life, and that doesn't mean post like the Debbie Downer parts of your life. You want to really be that um, the better version of yourself on Facebook, but sharing the light. And if you have something negative in your life that's going on, that is where the upswing, you always hear coaches talk about an upswing post. So you can talk about your struggle or something that's bad happening in your life, but then at the end of the post, you upswing it on how you're going to, to turn that around and how you're going to make that better and how you're going to really change because of this. And you turn it into a positive, right? A great, great example of this was Shalene Johnson, actually. Her, her account got hacked, and she did. She was up for like 40-some hours, and they were threatening the lives of her family and taking all of her money. And if you check out her one of her posts, she totally had an up – she took it into an upswing post about how um, – these guys aren't going to get her down and like, she's going to learn from this. And this is, you know, why creating, you know, an email list is so important. So she totally took it on the positive swing where she co totally could have went the other direction and just really dogged on it and just poor me. I can't believe this is happening. Like she totally could have went that direction and she didn't. So it's a great example of an upswing post, something bad that's happening in her life that she took it and made it a positive. So think really about Facebook is just sharing your entire life. Part of your life now is fitness. Part of your life is eating clean. You can share your vacations. You can share where you shop. You can share the latest thing that you found out about the coolest hairspray. You can, you can share all those things because it's life casting. Now, you still have to have your brand, which Naima is going to talk about this actually next week, so I won't go too much into detail on branding. So you should have, you know, at very max, 10 topics that you consistently talk about. But within those 10 topics is your life, right? So it could be your family, whatever things are your strong passions and things that mean a lot to you, you just have to consistently post about while intermingling your life. So Instagram, you can't do that so much. You gotta really stick to fitness, really stick to you know two or three topics. Facebook is a wider, wider array of uh, posting. So. I hope that helps a little bit on the differences between the two. Um, I'm going to go into some really quick, let me see here if I have any more notes on Facebook. Oh. Yeah, so just on Facebook, I just said, you know, if you have a really healthy breakfast, take a picture of it. In the natural lighting with the white picture, it still needs to be eye-catching. It can't be like half eaten. Same rules go for both of those. You're still marketing yourself. You're still trying to attract the right type of person. And it still has to, there still has to be thought behind each post. It just is more of life casting. Um, so you can share your workouts. You can share your kids. You can share your personal development. You can share your breakfast. You can share all of that. Um, and just be consistent with that. So it's more of a, a glimpse into your life. It's more of like a reality TV show Facebook is. So real quick. I want to, I know, you know, as a coach, we've, I, you know, I've been coaching a little over two years and you can hit this wall. Like, what do I post now? Like, I feel like I'm, I'm don't have motivation or I don't really can't, I'm not having the inspiration right now. So I don't know what to post. So here are just some quick things that you can post about on Facebook that do really well. So share a tool or a resource that's helped you. So maybe it's an app. Like for me, my fitness pal helped me so much in the beginning of my journey. So that's an awesome app that has helped me. 
um, a new finding, a good new book, any of those things that it, that's helped you get where you are today, just a tool or a resource that's helped you. Because once again, that's gonna add value to somebody else. Somebody else is gonna be looking for that. Another tip is to entertain. So upload a video from your phone. Um, I don't know if you guys seen my video from last weekend where Dean and I are just totally playing the drums, you know, in the car. And that was totally on a whim. We were doing it anyways. And Dean was like, dude, we should so get this on, on video. <laughs> I was like, that's awesome. So we did it. Um, so it, it entertains people. And that's really Dean and I, like that's really us. Um, and so people got to see that they got a glimpse into our life and what we were doing. So something that's funny, funny things always do well on, on Facebook. Um, and put it, okay, another tip is to put somebody else on the pedestal. So I love to give shout outs to my coaches, to my customers, um, to, you know, if, if, like I just did one the other day, you know, my, the three day refresh group lost like 55 pounds total, like out of everybody. And I did point one person out and say, look at this person. You can, I always ask first if you do that, like always make sure that they're okay with sharing pictures. Um, but I just gave the whole group a shout out and I said, this is awesome. And once again, you're building your credibility that way too. People are going to know that, you know, you're, what you're doing is real and you really are helping people. And if they're ready to come to you, right? So, um, definitely that helps. Number, the fourth tip um, for posts on Facebook is to post, you know, a question or a poll that almost anybody on Facebook would want to respond to that isn't just necessarily into Facebook or into fitness is what I meant to say. But so an example, well, before I was buying my mattress, I asked for people's opinions on mattresses. What mattress do you like? Would you prefer king or queen and why? And people were all over that. Everyone wanted to give their opinion on that. Um, I think I did one the other day too. What was that? It was just recent. Oh, iPhone. It was my iPhone. I was getting an upgrade and I was like iPhone six or six plus people and people were all over that one too. So get, you know, asking for people's opinions or getting a poll, those things always do super, super well on Facebook. Um, the fifth tip is, you know, doing an upswing post. So opening up about your struggles is what I talked about earlier. Um, and then include it positive, you know, make it, make it an upswing, how you're going to, how you're going to turn this around and how you're going to do, do good from this. So, um, number six is to post and save people that save people time and money. So it could be like a tip that you learned. Um, I know a lot of people like make their own laundry detergent. So if you're one of those type of people, you may not think, Oh, this is anything that cool. But that saves people a lot of money. You know, laundry detergent's expensive. So that's just an example of something that you could do. Anything that you do that saves you time or money. I'm an Aldi shopper, girls. That saves me time and money. Because it's one location, one stop shop, and I, I save so much money doing that. So that's another example. And I know I've done posts on that, and I, I probably should do one again because it's been a while. So um, number seven is answer frequently asked questions. So pay attention to what people private message you and ask you questions about. And there generally becomes a theme. People, you know, are asking you about motivation or about whatever. And if they are asking you that post about it, say, okay, well, this is kind of, I've been getting this question lots. And, um, if you want to make it even better, do a video. Videos are rocking on Facebook right now, especially on your personal page. So, um, really be paying attention to what people are asking you because if somebody's asking you that chances are there's a hundred other people that have thought it, they just haven't gotten brave enough to come and ask you personally. So number eight is to post something motivational. Um, that can be, you know, a before and after that can be, you know, your early morning workout. That's a variety of things. Just whatever motivates you is mostly like most likely going to help motivate somebody else. Number nine is how to or a system that has worked for you. So it could be like, you know, every Sunday you sit down and you plan your meals. And then you, from that, you do your grocery list. And from that, when you get home, you immediately plan and prep. So that's a system. And sharing that might help somebody else go, oh, this isn't so hard. I never thought about doing it like that, but that helped me. So sharing a system that has worked for you most likely will help somebody else. And it doesn't have to be necessarily that, but maybe it's just, you know, your morning routine, you know, something as simple as that. So number 10 is um, 
gratitude posts. So anything like you're grateful for, um, you know, why you're happy or why you're so thankful and any, those kind of posts always do really well. Number 12 is this is who I am post. Like just put yourself out there. This is who I am because there's not everybody's going to be your cup of tea and that's okay. That's actually great because you want to work with people that are like you. Um, that's what makes this business so fun and so rewarding is working with, as Shaleen says, your lifers. It's the people that love you no matter what. And that to me is what's so amazing about this business. Um, we don't have to just show up to work and work with Joe Blow because we have to, you know. Um, we're actually attracting people that, that, were, that are cool. So uh, posting who you are is just going to attract more of those kind of people. Number 13 is one out of every 10 posts should be an invitation to a challenge group, to the coaching opportunity, um, to, you know, what is coaching called to a webinar, to something like that. It should be, if you heard the, uh, last or couple team calls ago, um, they talked about jab, jab, right hook. And so the jab, jab, jabs are the other things we've talked about that right hook is inviting to a challenge group is inviting to the co coaching opportunity to a sneak peek to a, a what is coaching call or webinar um something like that so if you post all about that you're just going to scare everybody away but those do have to be done like they have to because that's how we grow our business so um and if you could there's totally you can do that and not a salesy way at all so it's definitely possible those are my big tips on facebook and i have some do's and don'ts are you guys ready I'll just kind of go over the ones that I think that are uh, most crucial. Let me see. I don't even know how much time I have left. Okay, I'll go over them really quickly because I would like to do a little Q&A if you guys have some questions afterwards. So quick do's. Engage, inspire, and ask for opinions. We kind of talked about this already, but asking a question and not just any question, not one like a rhetorical question like, how are you guys feeling today? Like, don't you always go up to somebody during the day and say, how are you? And they don't even think they say good, fine, something they don't even think. So asking something like that on Facebook, you're not going to get a response because people are answering it, but in their own head. So you want to ask a question that they want to, they want to answer. So opinions are really good too. Um, uh, number two is just, you know, providing valuable and helpful content. We kind of went over that be original. So this is so important too on Facebook and on Instagram. It's okay to post something occasionally from Pinterest, um, but original content is where it's at, right? So people are following you because they want to see you. If you're posting, you know, 21 day fix workout or, you know, a person like a motivational picture of someone else you don't even know that you found on Pinterest, if you're posting that, that's not, that's not relatable. Nobody, nobody really cares. You're not going to get likes and comments because that's not you. People want to see you working out. People want to see your food. Um, and that is so cr crucial. And it's hard. It's really hard opening yourself up. I remember as a new coach, I was like, Ugh, I can't believe I'm doing this. But that's really where the magic happened is to be original and be you and don't be afraid to be in some of those pictures. And like I said, once in a while, that's not a bad thing, but don't make a habit of that. Going into that too, don't share other people's things. That doesn't pop up in your newsfeed and it really, it doesn't help and give you credibility. Um, you can take what you found from somebody else or a different, you know, website and make it your own, but clicking share and writing something at the top isn't really gonna, gonna help you as much. So just know that too. So, and Something else with Facebook, especially as a new coach, you really have to know your audience. And so most likely as a new coach, a very small percentage are into fitness, nutrition, and health. Very small percentage. So as a new coach, you really want to think about the types of people that are on your Facebook newsfeed. For me, it's a lot of moms, it's a lot of nurses, it's a lot of um people my age, they like to go out and do things. So I have to really be aware of that. There are, my Facebook following is, is, has increased, but not as a new coach. So you really want to interweave your fitness, health and nutrition posts. Um, 
and primarily really focus on other types of posts that your following is. And it, over time, your fitness following will grow and you'll find that you're, you know, friend requesting more and more other coaches, other people that are into fitness. And so that percentage will widen. And so more people will engage on those kinds of posts. Um, but just be aware of that. Uh, make sure, you know, that when you're uh, posting to tag them back, write a comment, use, you know, I love exclamation points. If you can just see, I kind of get exclamation point happy. I'm like five. <laughs> um, and I like to do smileys and things like that. But that just, you know, for me is like positive and happy and um, things like that. So you want to make sure that you're, you know, giving off the positive, happy vibes. Um, post with questions, like I, we talked about earlier, um, and make sure that you're doing, you're doing follow-ups on Facebook, make sure, and they don't have to be like, Hey, are you still wanting to do that challenge group? It can just be like, Hey, how was your weekend? I seen pictures of you at the lake. Was it fun? Did you guys have fun? That's a follow-up. Cause like I said, remember this business is driven by relationships. So building that relationship is just going to continue to build that trust. And in return, you know, over time, their interest in what you're doing. So, okay. Another good one is, you know, a lot of times when you go out with friends or are doing something, people will tag you in pictures and it will show up on your newsfeed. So I do lots of cleanups. A lot of times people will tag me and I'm like, that's all fine and dandy, but now I'm going to hide that post <laughs> because your Facebook again is a representation of your business. It's marketing and you can't have like crazy photos on your Facebook newsfeed. Um, it's just not professional. Um, so you really have to think of it like a business, you know? So I do that a lot. I will go through and hide pictures. <laughs> Some don'ts. Like I said, don't share, don't share other people's things. Don't advertise DVDs and Shakeology. Don't, you know, I, I've done it. I'm not going to say I haven't where you kiss the Shakeology bag and you're like, I love this. It, it is amazing. It totally is. And I love it. I really do. But nobody else cares. Let's be real. Um, and it just comes across salesy, right? So that, all that goes into private messages. When they find out what you're drinking, you can say, I love Shakeology because this is what's done for me. And that's where you can really begin to talk to people about Shakeology. But kissing a bag of Shakeology, you're not going to get, you guys like this? <laughs> you're not going to really get uh, that interaction from people. So. Oh, this is a big one. And I get suckered into this one all the time. Scrolling the newsfeed. Don't do it. It's, it's a time waster, time sucker. And you're going to end up just, you know, working for an hour. And really, you've just been commenting and liking on other people's stuff. And you are like, I didn't message anybody. And I didn't, I was supposed to set up a Facebook group, but I didn't even do that. I just got lost on Facebook. So be careful with Facebook. What's helped me is going in with a plan, knowing, okay, I'm going to message this person, this person, and this person. Um, and when I'm going to message those people, I might go directly to those people's Facebooks and comment and like on their pictures, but I'm not going to get stuck in that newsfeed. Um, and just going in with a plan with Facebook, that's really key. Because boy, I can get suckered into the newsfeed. I'm like, oh my gosh, that happened. Oh, let me keep going. And then you're like, oh gosh, I wasted 30 minutes. So. And don't air dirty laundry. Let's like, that kind of goes back to the negative thing. Like, I mean, my marriage is not perfect. Dean and I do have arguments and disagreements, but I'm not going to post that on Facebook. <laughs> um, we're normal. And like I tell people, you know, people are always like, oh, your relationship. And I'm like, dude, it's hard just like anybody else's. I love the man to death, but I'm not going to post about that, our negative side on Facebook. And so that, that same is true with anything. I don't get along with my sister 100% of the time. Dude, my house is dirty right now, and I'm not going to post about that. Well, I might. If it's, if it's an upswing post. <laughs> if it's an upswing post, but um, not if it's if – I'm not going to just sit there and complain about my, my dirty house, right? Unless I'm going to say, have, have a, a tip on how to keep your house clean during the week when your week is busy. That could be a post that you could do. My house is dirty, and I'm going to come up with a system to, get, to kick this out of, out of the habit. So, anyway, I can get – I can talk. <laughs> um, 
Oh, posting bad times a day. Don't do it. Try not to anyways, because if you're posting a challenge group invitation, best times of, you know, the day are usually evenings after for me, like, you know, I have a lot of moms in my newsfeed. So it's after kids go to bed. So eight thirty, nine o'clock are really good times to post in the evening. Um, and it just depends, like I said, on your, on your target market and who's on your newsfeed. But I found personally for Sundays and Mondays and even Thursdays, but going into that Friday, Saturday, mm, people don't really care about your fitness challenge group. They don't. So even though you care about it, they don't care. And 11 o'clock at night, most people are sleeping. So nobody's going to see that either. Um, And another tip is to try not to inbox people from your phone. And I know I've done that occasionally, but I find you put way more thought into your response if it's from a computer. You treat it more like a business when it's from a computer. And you read it and you put some thought and you type versus just answering somebody really quick. So just be aware of that as well. That's all I have. I know we've got six, seven minutes left. So I'm going, just unmute yourself if you have a question. Does that sound good? Because if not, we're going to get a lot of static. So unmute yourself if you've got a question. Hit me up. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay, go girl. Okay. So um, we talked about this before and maybe some other people might benefit from this and I don't know where you're at with it, but Facebook like page versus personal page traction wise. Ooh. Where are you with that? Good question. My like, my, my, my like page is not doing near as well. My personal okay. page is doing a lot better. Um, I still post my like page cause I want to keep that going, but I'm kind of doing what Naima had told me she's doing. She's primarily posting on her personal page and when she knows she's going to boost um, a post, she'll post that to her like page, tag her personal page, and then boost it. Am I right, Naima? Hmm. Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. So, yeah. So say, say that again. So, okay. You're, let, so you post your like page. So primarily she posts your personal page. So primarily she, she'll post and, well, you want to take yourself off mute, Naima? Yeah. I'm off mute now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Great. So I'll post on my personal page the majority of the week and I boost, now I'm at the point, I'll boost two posts a week. I'm really trying to push hard, um, but I'll do a, only on my like page when I'm ready to boost a post, like a, um, a, a challenge or just for more engagement, I'll boost. But other than that, I don't post to my like page anymore. And you know the drama I'm getting with my like page for as boost. <laughs> they keep denying my ads too. <laughs> so that's been a difficult challenge. But what I'm finding is, well, now I, like I said, enough swing. I'm learning from that experience and finding the words that they flag, like the word other. They don't like the word other. They don't like the word ladies. <laughs> and so, or when you're target marketing, like asking questions, losing weight, things like that, they don't like those anymore. I know they we used to they used to like that maybe two weeks ago. Now they don't like that anymore. I guess too many coaches started to do it. Um, so Facebook doesn't like that. So they're denying ads for those type of posts. But to answer your question, um, I'm, I am I'm posting the majority of my life or or of the business on my personal page, and only when I'm really doing an ad where I want the majority to see it, I'll pump it on my um on my, my like page. Awesome. I love it. Awesome. Do you have any questions for me or for anybody or statements? I like statements. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. So this is about Instagram. This is something I'm actually currently going through. I have people that do not have Facebook pages. I'm like, who doesn't have Facebook? <laughs> but anyway, so they don't have Facebook pages, but they want to have the conversation until we take it to email. But of course, when you're getting to know people, the emails get so long. Um, so I'm having an issue, like, because of course I work as, you, you know, majority of us, we have other things we have going on. So these emails get so long and I want to respond to, you know, and engage and keep that conversation going. 
Um, have you ex ever experienced that where you have a person that's only on Instagram and they go to email? Have you ever experienced that? I have. Okay. I actually do. And I'm not the best at checking my email. I try to because I try to send most of my coaches to message me on my email. Um, but I find email hard for some reason. I agree. I'm, yeah. I need to get better at email. <laughs> that didn't help you at all. Does anybody else have any? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, what I did tell I said, well, maybe you should get a Facebook page. <laughs> I see how to move the parties at Facebook. I said the party we have parties on Facebook. Right. We have all the you want to come to my living room? Get Facebook. That's right. um, I have a tip for you. Yes. So I had a couple people who didn't have Facebook and I told them, you know, I asked if they would create a Facebook account and I would be their only friend. And that way they could still join the accountability groups, but no one would know they were there. Well, except the ladies in the accountability group, but they wouldn't ever show up in anyone's newsfeed. You could basically just tell them it's basically like you're creating another email account because we can message through there. It's more personal and you can join the community without anyone in your life knowing. So, and it's worked and that's, that's what we did. So. Yeah. And Lynn, yeah. You, didn't you do like, didn't she sign up like with a different last name? So no one would find her too. Yeah. I've had someone do that too. Yeah. Just tell them to like, say like hot girl 59 yeah. or something. <laughs> I love it. Woohoo. Okay. Less than a minute, guys. It was it was good. If you guys have any questions, don't just he don't hesitate to me, you know, message me or something. So love ya. Mwah!